Yeah, it's great to be here today. My name is Richard Sharp. Um, I come from London, England. I serve with a ministry, uh, OM, Operation Mobilization. OM also means on medication. <laughs> and the mission is off medication. So I've been 40 years on medication. Been around the world to 100 countries. I have, I have a sort of a, a traveling itinerant ministry based in Tyrone at our US base. And uh, have a passion to equip. This is, I think, why uh, our hearts connected. Um, my great joy is not just doing something, but helping somebody else. And they come back or I hear and say, wow, Richard, you helped me. One of the gals who had to slip away because of a ball game from the little workshop said, Richard, I want to meet somebody this afternoon and share what you shared with me. That's the music. Any person training here, teaching, that's the music. Not that was nice, appreciate that, took some nice notes, what's, let's get some coffee. But when they hear you don't, want to do something uh, with it. And uh, I've been this summer in, um, in Spain and France and Portugal. I was training OM teams there, train them in one wish, this simple, friendly approach in evangelism. We've got it now in about uh, 10 languages. And uh, it was exciting to have... 120. This was outside Barcelona, where, of course, there's been real troubles with terrorism and then with the politics. And um, it was exciting. One day did a training. Then I took them out into a park. I said, let's reach people. And uh, within half an hour, a gal came running up to me, an Italian girl, said, oh, Richard, I just met a guy who said, you're the first person I'm meeting since I came out of prison one hour ago. And she shared one with the, the bracelet with him, led him to the Lord, gave him a wristband. He said, this is the first gift I'm receiving. And a couple of other girls I taught in the morning, uh, Latinos, uh, girls living in Texas. And I uh, met an older Spanish lady, Anna, and uh, said a few words with her in Spanish that I need help. So I grabbed these two girls, <laughs> watched these two share with this lady, led her to the Lord. She was just crying and just watching people right there. Um, in fact, we had, a, we had a gathering. The mayor gave us permission for a stage. 0.01% um, know Jesus in Spain. And um, the mayor gave us a stage in this beautiful park. And uh, 120 people. We had 30 nationalities from around the world. So we did music, drama. We linked with four churches locally. This event went on for about three hours and uh, got up to preach. I actually gave everybody there, three to four hundred, a wristband and then said, let me show you what these four pictures mean. And we saw people come to Jesus. And then I saw something happen. I don't think I've ever quite seen uh, in these 40 years with OM. People, joy broke out. And joy broke out in the form of dance. <laughs> Uh, and just, it was all spontaneous, it just happened all over the place, just started popping up, and often the children, and it just broke out all over the place, and the newspapers picked up on this. They wrote the next day about this joy breaking out, because most people have just said no to any form of religion and just pushed it away. And, uh, but when they see there's something contagious about joy, interesting the theme of this ministry, equipping with joy. And, uh, and, and joy broke out. Um, I've also just been recently in Egypt uh, with 500 Egyptian believers doing a missions uh, week, equipping, preaching. Um, 20 brothers from South Sudan met Muslim background believers uh, at that gathering and had a tremendous time um, with them. One, um, after, interesting, after one preaching, a man came up to me, a Muslim background believer, been in Christ six years. And um, he said, Richard, I hear voices in my ears that stop me praying. And I was knelt down on the stage. He was standing um, on the ground, short, stocky, quite muscular man. And I just started speaking to the demons, blocking him. And then he went straight down. And not a little slump, this was bang. In fact, he, and this is hard concrete, went straight down. And then I climbed down off the stage. And he was writhing 
like a snake, but he was basically unconscious. And he was as stiff as a board. And this musk, musk but he was just, 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 just like this on the ground. And we spoke to the demonic probably for a couple of minutes, then spoke the peace of Christ over him. And he sat up, no more voices, and, uh, and went to his room. And um, so God is, uh, God is at work and uh, then went to the Dominican Republic. In fact, we, Rachel and I arrived on the ship and um, the hurricane was hitting. It just skirted uh, um, Santo Domingo area. But our ship actually had to move. I arrived on a Tuesday. Within an hour, we had to move to a 150-mile anchorage outside, outside the um, area. Um, and, then, uh, and then came back. 6,000 people on Sunday came to the ship. And, uh, and what an opportunity to, to, uh, to share Christ. That was my last day. I left the next morning uh, back to the States. Um, I leave next week for England. Um, and uh, pray for my twin sister. I prayed 22 years for her to come to Jesus. And she came to Jesus in a powerful way. Then about five weeks ago, she called me. And we all experienced our day of trouble. When she'd gone for a checkup, found there was some little lump here, little throat cough, and then they said she has stage three cancer. Um, so she's had chemo. They, they actually, she, after it, they went, she went back and they said, all we can say, it's a miracle how it shrunk. We haven't seen it shrink like this. So I'll be visiting her next week and then I go on to Israel with Rachel um, to be with the team and ministry there. And uh, just this, just this um, thing about Rachel's arranged the tea. She would be here today, but she, she's arranged this kind of ladies' tea tomorrow afternoon at the OM, um, at the OM uh, place and um, inviting ladies she knows. And uh, we've been invited to, this is like a pilot project of OM, when we're just seeing, you know, what happens. We have ships. <laughs> But uh, you know these, like these Viking cruise ships that you see the ads for? We're going to take one out of season and use it for ministry on the rivers uh, for three months. Um, first in the Netherlands, Holland, then France, then Germany. Have maybe 40 to 50 young people on board uh, and just sail it and see what God does with the ship. And they actually invited Rachel and I for a month. My expenses were covered but I wanted Rachel to come with me. And um, so she raised the tea to raise funds that she can come with me for those. We'll be there for the whole month, the four weeks. Of, we actually fly the day after Christmas uh, if it all works out. And uh, they want us particularly um, to do equipping and evangelism uh, with, with the young people on the, on the boat. And I have to call it a boat now. It's not a ship, a boat. Um, <laughs> And then working with the churches. So uh, praying for that month. So Rachel's been setting up, cutting sandwiches, doing all the kinds of stuff uh, for that event uh, tomorrow. And praying uh, for ladies to come. She has about 40 ladies coming uh, already. And if anyone wanted to come, this would be last minute. Uh, if you said so, let me. It's at 3.30 to 5 tomorrow. Um, and uh, mention, give, just say to me, if, you, if you'd like to come, you'd be welcome. And it's actually a fundraiser with a $25 uh, for that, or if you so gracious of you, Tammy, to say if you want to give a, a gift towards that. But uh, normally in OM, you can only be three weeks away from your honey. Your, uh, and um, so this is four, actually about four and a half weeks. So um, it would be my great delight for Rachel uh, to be with me on that trip. So thanks very much. Uh, that was a surprise. I'll leave those little cards by the end of the table. Hey, do you like my box? Do you like my box? Yes. Yes. You like my box, don't you? Yes. Do you like my box? Hey, we like boxes. We live in a box. We drive a box. We watch a box. <laughs> I was going to say we play Xbox, but probably it's your grandkids or your kids. <laughs> we eat out of a box if we go to KFC. We shop at a big box or now Amazon Prime and get a box. Worship in a box. One day they'll put us in a box. Why are you laughing? 
Now talk to me. What do I like my box? It's predictable. predictable. Yeah. What do I like my box? Comfortable. Comfortable. I'm used to it. Used hey, and this is my box. Get your own. Yeah. What do I like my box? You can carry it. I can carry it. In I'm in control. I've got my boundaries. I've got my borders. I'm in my comfort zone. And we like our box. In fact, welcome to the American dream. <laughs> get a box, fill it with the latest and greatest. When it gets filled up, get a bigger box. Raise two kids to get their box. Get a container box, store more stuff in. And here's the thinking. Here's the American dream. By the way, I'm not getting mad at you. I'm married to an American. It's a British dream, the Chinese dream. <laughs> Been a hundred nations around the world. But here's the thinking. If I get a box, fill it with the latest and greatest. And I wrap it with insurance. And I live inside my box. Then I can live a risk-free life. And if I can live a risk-free life, then I can live a worry-free life. And if I can live a worry-free life, then I will be happy. The American dream. But what you gain, you have to maintain. That becomes a pain and a drain. And to raise two kids to do the same. Shall I say that again? And God wants us to rise above box living. Yes. Amen. God wants you and me to rise above box living. Because box living is safe. Just before I flew to Egypt, I was in a gym. Said to a guy, I'm going to, to Egypt. First words out of his mouth, is it safe? <laughs> when I was with these 500 believers from Egypt, last time I was with them, I met with the leadership team in a house. Whenever there was a knock on the door, everyone would go quiet and they'd look through a keyhole, a little hole, see if it was the secret police. All night that happened. It was interesting, there were about a dozen Americans in the corner with the headphones because of the translation. And when I mentioned about safe, I said, put your hand up. If somebody said to you, you were coming to Egypt, is it safe? Every hand went up. It's the number one American value. Yeah. Little turbulence on the plane. Be speaker goes on, seat belts, you know. Don't get, get safe. And you and I can have box thinking. Box living. Box moving. This box living is safe living. I want a safe life. Oh, I'll do a little bit on the side. I'll give a little bit on the side. As long as... I'm safe. Safe living. Box thinking is small thinking. Because you think everything inside the box. What can I get from outside to get in the box? And what I've got in the box to keep it in the box. Small thinking. And slow moving. <laughs> the favorite word of box people is tomorrow. Uh, there you, go. 
You can have a dream and you call it Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know what Sunday is with your dream? It's a daydream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One year later, how's the dream? Oh, yeah. this is a daydream. Yeah. There are seven days in the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's no Sunday in the week. So you and I rise above and out of the box. Safe living. Small thinking. Slow moving. You try to move in a box. Ain't easy. And Jesus told a story. You know it well. And I think one of these characters was in the box. The story in Matthew 25 of the master with his three servants. Now I'm going to call the three servants Tom, Dick, and Harry, and I'm Harry. Say hello to Harry. Hello. That was weak. Say hello to Harry. Hey, Harry. Bit better. One more time. Say hello to Harry. Hey, Harry. There you go. I'm Harry. Whoa. Master, you're a... Uh, you're off on a trip. Oh, whoa. Wow. And uh, wow, you're, you're, uh, you're going to be away a while. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Well, and you're given uh, Tom five talents. Whoa. <laughs> wow, Dick two. <laughs> wow, me just, uh, just one. <laughs> wow. I wonder why the master gave him Tom five and uh, Dick two and... He just won. <laughs> Guess the master knows what he's doing. <laughs> well, you're off, master. You want, you want us to invest it and uh, you, you can come back. <laughs> if you could text, give me a heads up. That'd be really good when you're coming back. <laughs> and uh, Wow, Tom, you're off. <laughs> be careful. You could lose it all. <laughs> master won't be happy with you. <laughs> Wow, Dick, the two, I do the one and one myself. Maybe, you know, uh, risk the one and hold the other one back, you know. It's uh, <laughs> a rainy day and all that. <laughs> wow. Why don't we do this one? Is this you? What's your talent then? Have you got five, two, or one? So what you can do with that writing talent? teaching talent. That hospitality talent. That prophetic talent, gifting. That generosity talent. What are you doing with what God's given you? But, oh, Tom. This is safe living. Huh? Tom, Dick, they, they could lose it all, huh? Huh? Safe living. I like my home. I don't want to move. I like my family. I like my culture. I don't want to move. They're going off. I don't know where they're going. Could be way, way, miles away. 
Who knows, maybe another country. Are you kidding me? And I've only got one. I've only got one. Small thinking. Does a raster really need this? Invested? Tom and Dick, they could carry the cover the bases. They're successful. And they shot out, out of a gun. They just took off. As soon as the master left, they were, they were. Maybe tomorrow. Next year. Someday. I'm sure it'll be okay with them. Hey, I'm okay. He's okay. <laughs> Everything's okay. I can tell him I've been at a quipping day. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder when the master will be back. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Whoa, master! Wow, you're back. You could have text. <laughs> wow, good trip, good trip. <laughs> Great. Wow, Tom, you're back. Wow, Dick, good to see you. It's been a while. <laughs> and uh, wow, here we are again, all together. <sighs> Another equipping conference. Great. <laughs> Wow, Master seems happy with Tom. Whoa, doubled it. Whoa, lucky, could have lost it all. <laughs> wow, going to be a VP in the kingdom. Whoo, <laughs> that's, good. that's good. Wow, Dick, you doubled as well. <laughs> I'd have done the one and one, but <laughs> wow, VP in the kingdom as well, Master. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Master. <laughs> nice to see you looking good. Thank you. <laughs> you, you want the <laughs> <laughs> well, here it is, Master. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> you you can count it all. It's all I kept my eye <laughs> on it. I didn't let anybody touch this. I <laughs> Here it is, Master. <laughs> Master, you don't look so happy. <laughs> I I can look I could have lost it all. I I I'm, I I I didn't gain anything, but I but I didn't lose anything, did I? That's good, isn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> and here's the words in the message. The master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It is criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? The least you could have done was to invest it with the bankers where I, at least I'd have got something back. So give this talent to the one who risked the most. And take this play it safe who won't go out on a limb and throw him into outer darkness. Mm -hmm. 
How do you like that for an ending? We like happy endings. Maybe we want to leave today saying that was nice. But I like my box. And if I go for it with my talent, I could lose it all. I like safe living. Okay, small thinking. Slow moving. The story makes me nervous. It doesn't fit all with my theology. My box theology. This must be to the unbeliever. There was a day when the father said to the son, son, it's wonderful here. All this beauty, all this space, all this glory, all this music, all this order. But I need you to step out. And maybe today God shakes your box. Maybe things have happened in your life where the box gets a bit wrecked. Huh? Of course, that's the devil. Yeah. But maybe it's God. Yeah. <coughs> Hard to rip these. God wants us to step out. Take what he's given us and say no safe living, no small thinking, even with one talent, no snow, slow moving, someday, one day, tomorrow, next year. And when the sun stepped out of heaven, No safe living. No small thinking. No slow moving. And he says to you, come. Step out of the box. I want to invite you to come. If you want to say no to the box. And box living, box thinking, box moving. And rise above safe living, small thinking, slow moving.
and use the talent God's given you. And I want to invite you to come if you want to make a commitment today. And I want you to write your name. And I want you to write down one talent. You may have two, you may have five. But I want you to write down one talent. that you're not going to play it safe with. You're not going to think small with. You're not going to move slow with. If you want to write your first name and then that talent below. I believe it's not in the story. I just have a sense if the servant with one talent had gone and lost it all and the master said the master would have been happier. The master would have been happier.